Don't do it or your junk is gonna fall off. Hi, I'm Samantha Biddy, sexual health and consent educator and a registered bad baby. Today's lesson is in psychology, the psychology of pleasure-centered sex. Y'all, this is a huge topic, so we're going to focus on sex shame. In order to do so, we have to look at our perceptions. So where do we get our ideas about sex? And we talked a bit about that in our foundations lesson, our motivations, our emotions, and then how that affects our behavior and decision-making. Let's start with perceptions. Our perceptions are informed by our experiences, as well as the systems of oppression that govern the different aspects of our society. When it comes to sex and sex shame specifically, almost all systems of oppression have their hands in the cookie jar. I won't name them all, but top of the list is gonna be patriarchy, misogyny, homophobia, capitalism, a perfect illustration of this would be slut shaming. This perception of a sexually liberated woman as being a negative thing. And like, slut shaming is so misguided. Being a slut is amazing. Motivations. Primarily, if we're even taught about sex, it's from this risk averse, reward versus punishment approach. Like how our first intros to sex ed in school are like, don't do it or you're gonna pass away. Don't do it or your junk is gonna fall off. Don't do it or no one's gonna marry you. I've been married like a few times and it's not that great. Sorry, Henry. How do we shift our motivations towards pleasure as opposed to away from pain? We have to evaluate our motivations. Some motivations that come to mind are horniness. Like, have you ever been a 30-something woman and ovulating and your body is like, breathe me! Attention, boredom, being a Scorpio, wanting money, which sex work is real work. Motivations can also be fluid and change across relationships and our lifetime and all of that. And an illustration of what it looks like to have pleasure-centered motivations is for us to neutralize our relationship to those motivations, i.e. like not judging why we wanna smash emotions. We've got to name the fact that sex, even sexting, is emotional. How do we honor our love languages and our boundaries while also honoring each other? Let's say your boundaries are in conflict with a partner's needs or wants or vice versa. We are not responsible for other people's feelings we are, however, responsible for thoughtful consideration. Find that compatibility. Decision-making. What of all of that affects or informs our decision-making? Essentially, who and when and how we wanna smash. How we communicate before, during, and after, which is integral to consent culture and can look like things like aftercare. And aftercare can be a snuggle or it can be tea and cookies. Check for nut allergies. Behavior. What does behavior that moves towards pleasure as opposed to away from pain, unless you like that, actually look like? It looks like allowing our feelings to inform our actions, but not predetermine our behavior. And as that relates to sex shame, it's a lot of letting go of old ideas that aren't really authentic to our needs or wants or values. For example, if you grew up around a lot of homophobia, but spiritually you know that you need your face in a vulva, those feelings are old ideas. Let's say you feel super embarrassed about masturbating. That doesn't mean you can't get in that shower, adjust the little shower head thing. Do we have a shower sponsor? No, 
Okay, shower head thing, generic shower head thing, and see what happens. What you need to know. You can actually change the pathways in your brain, and your homework is gonna have an activity on how to do that. And you can employ any number of emotional technologies to have the sex that you desire with humor, resiliency, passion, empathy, handcuffs. And look, some feelings can't be resolved and that's okay. Make sure you check out this week's homework on slice.ca.